Um, and I'd like to demonstrate to you two aspects of uh, performing and composing that I would find particularly interesting with this piano and also in, in relation to the software, in combination with the software, something that I've uh, experimented with for, for many years, even since my childhood, kind of rummaging around a piano to see what the interesting sounds are and placing loudspeakers all over the place. Um, and that's no exaggeration. Uh, so this is really uh, a kind of a, a nice way to kind of close the circle and come back to something as high quality as this with software that you can use uh, that's very uh, usable, easy to use, easy to manipulate. Um, the first thing I'd like to show you is what you can do when you're improvising with uh, something as a software synthesizer. I've just changed a couple of the parameters uh, of the presets, but you will obviously feel free to do that for yourself to shape the things according to your own tastes. And what happens when you play that simultaneously with an acoustic piano, and of course the natural resonant frequencies of the piano, and don't forget that all the sounds that I'm uh, creating or manipulating here through the synthesizer are coming back through the transducer. So it's one big sound world. Um, this is something that's of particular interest to me um, when I work with uh, fixed playback or even live electronic sounds and acoustic instruments. Very often the sound is separated by electroacoustic phenomenon, i.e. loudspeakers, placed somewhere other than where the source of the acoustic instrument is coming from. Um, there's always a kind of discrepancy for me. If I can see, okay, there's the performer, but the treated sound is coming from over there. There's a visual, but also not an auditive uh, discrepancy there. But here we have the beauty that this is the loudspeaker where everything is coming from. And I think that, that offers some quite interesting possibilities. So if I take just here um, an acoustic piano again, acoustic piano I must say and I'm combining that with in this case uh, main stage where I've used um, one of the synthesizers an Apple synthesizer called sculpture it's got some very interesting physical modeling and sculpturing aspects to it and what we've done um, is again using the MIDI triggering capability of the piano is to trigger uh, and if I take the piano stop off um, you can trigger certain sounds at, uh, at a certain octave. So I can say, okay, in my performance, in my, in my improvisation, I'm only going to be, at least in the acoustic instrument, going to be concentrating on this part of the keyboard, whereas with the software, I've got the lower register. So there are some sounds that I can contour at the same time. Obviously, if I put the, take the piano stop away, I've got... For me, obviously, it's a question of matching the harmonics. Is it uh, enharmonic? Is it disharmonic? Is it dissonant? But it doesn't really matter at this stage. Um, that's a question of fine-tuning and a question of composition. Uh, but for me, the beauty of this is that you can just start improvising with it and see how far we go. So I'll just demonstrate you a quick improvisation where I'm controlling these sounds myself. <laughs> guess or uh, surmise by the way I'm playing I'm listening to the shape of the sound is it rolling off when is the next attack going to be so I'm already thinking compositionally uh, and I can hear it with absolute clarity here. this is another important factor if I can't hear it clearly as a performer or as an improviser or as a composer then I don't actually know what I'm working with but here with the transducer piano I can hear this with a great deal of precision so the other thing that I'd like to demonstrate in regard to that is that I can actually record some of these uh, MIDI improvisations, the synthesized sculptural improvisations, and play them back, leaving me free to not always think about, okay, here I am dividing my body or dividing my practice, in a sense performance practice, into this part of the sound uh, composition and then up here, which for me uh, is probably not one of the, uh, uh, I suppose uh, after a long period it becomes a bit of a, a separated thing where I'm aware that I'm actually working with two keyboards in a way. Uh, becomes a bit false, a bit fake, at least for me. But here I can actually kind of free, my, free myself up to do something perhaps a bit more developed. So I'm just going to improvise a couple of very, very simple tones here, record them with the ad silent, 
play them back through the transducer and then see where we go with it. And you'll see that it's a very different performance practice. Just something very simple. with it. I'm just going to adjust the level here slightly so that we don't get too much level. Okay. So if you think, actually, it just occurred to me while I was doing this, if you, if you heard the very, very last resonance of the, I stopped the recording playback there, because I thought, okay, that's an interesting place harmonically to stop, and also compositionally. Um, you can hear how faithfully, and it's surprising me actually at that moment, that the very, very last synthesized sound and its richness was actually represented very, very faithfully. Uh, and if we think of the piano as a kind of filter, as a spectrum filter, then it's no surprise, but I don't know many pianos that can actually do that when you think, actually, that still sounds like the synthesizer. With some pianos, or most pianos, you think, oh, that sounds like a piano resonating to the sound of a synthesizer. But if I can still hear the synthesizer, that's a testimony to the quality of the transducer and to Michael Acker's work as well in, in fine-tuning fine that, and also the Steingraber's uh, piano. So that's one possibility, or two possibilities with the synthesizer, uh, and then recording. And I'd now like to play uh, the last movement of a piece I've written. Uh, it's a six-movement work but I'll just play you the very, very last movement to demonstrate how uh, in experimental music you have uh, very often not just live electronics but actually pre-composed electronics that you will play back to, play along to. And I will demonstrate that now for you here. And again, what's very important is if you think of a whole performance, I mean, we're doing this obviously in a video, you'll be doing this when you're rehearsing, when you're preparing things at home, you can stop and start, but you're seeing this in real time. And in a, in a, a performance situation, in a concert, you need to be able to change just like that on the fly. You don't need to be worrying about, is that going to work? Do I need to shut this down, open this up again? Here you can just put all the commands that you need to on a keyboard or external MIDI devices, uh, and then just carry on performing. So nothing stops your performance at this point. That's the last thing you want as a performer. So.
there. Um, <laughs> I'm a bit out of breath there because uh, what you probably won't know, so I'm going to tell you that this is the first time I've done this on this piano with this transducer, with this software. And what I would also tell you is that I've had many situations where software just stops, computers stop, hard disks stop, all these kinds of things. The fact that you can just do this without any rehearsal, quick sound check, sound quality is there, and I play something like this, and also I'm getting the resonance back on the piano, which is not something I've ever had before. With this piece, I'm normally used to the loudspeakers being quite distanced. It's just wonderful. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a completely different feeling, and obviously because I'm the composer of the piece, I'm thinking, oh, I didn't hear that before. I haven't heard that before. So even if you're not a composer, even if you're a performer, this is gonna open up your ears to lots of new possibilities. Um, so I think that's kind of demonstrated just in a very, very general way that you can already do quite amazing things with this. Um, as ever, great instruments uh, lay the challenge at the feet of the musicians and the composers, the performers, to do equally good things, or at least to try. And that for me is a, just a, opens up a world of possibilities that makes it a joy to make music. Um, so I'm very grateful for the work for Ma uh, Michel Acker to the transducer concept, Steingraben, also the software, it's a great instrument and it opens up lots of possibilities, endless possibilities one can say, for dramatic but also very, very fine work. Um, it's a great, great way of working with it. And as I mentioned, this is, you can apply this transducer technology to all Steingraben.